Okay, good day everyone. I welcome you all to um, the discussion on um, CE424, Water Resource Engineering, particularly on week 4. And our topic for this day will be on the design of water distribution systems. Okay, so uh, before we start now, let's um, have an overview of how uh, the discussion for um, design of water distribution system will go. So basically, we will be starting uh, on the topic no, wherein um, ato sa i-design ang water distribution system and after no, makahibalo ta on how to properly design um, a water distribution system, that's the time that uh, we will be discussing on uh, the details on how we will be able to distribute no, the uh, water no, based on the population and based on the discharge that we are trying to attain. So, ato din na siyang um, uh, mag-design po taan ano, on how we will be able to effectively distribute that one uh, dito sa ato ang mga beneficiaries. Particularly, no, na atay doha klase on how we will be able to distribute that. First is via closed conduit and open channel. So, when we say closed conduit, so basically that is um, the general term we use for pipes. No? So, naatay mga circular pi pipes. Napuntay mga rectangular pipes. So, and aside from that, no, um, not only that uh, we will be talking about pipes or the one we call closed conduits or we will also be talking about pumps. No? Uh, how do we cater water towards areas that are higher in elevation as compared to the source? Okay, so when we say uh, open channels, these are uh, kanang mga open canals. No, um, kana to makita sa kilid, no, sa dalan. So those are considered open channels or kanang uh, uncovered, no, uncovered uh, channel of water. Okay. So, muna siya. So, after na siya na to, uh, after madiskasan na to on how to properly design no, um, our system to be able to distribute that one no, to the household, considering the number of population, meaning kung sa kadaghan na itong beneficiaries for uh, in that certain locality and at the same time, no, ang discharge or how much water do they need na based on the population. So, after na maka, maka come up ta na now we can proceed to uh, the design for um, pipelines, no, particularly the closed conduits and open channel. But uh, what we will be discussing this day is kanilang sa, okay? So muna siya ito ang discussion for this day. And the rest of the discussion that will follow, most likely, no, dito tamo proceed sa kana. Okay? So now let's talk about design of water distribution system. Okay, so water distribution systems move water from water sources to treatment plants and from treatment plants to homes, offices, industries, and other water consumers. The major components of a water distribution system include pipelines, pumps, storage facilities, valves, and meters. So the primary objective in designing a water distribution system are, number one, Supply each customer with water at an adequate rate at an adequate pressure. Second, uh, to be able to deliver water that meets water quality criteria for drinking. And third objective you know, in designing a water distribution system is to have efficient, uh, sufficient rather, you know, capacity and reserve storage for fire protection and emergency conditions. So, matong akong gi-highlight uh, previously no, in our discussion that um, in water resource engineering, we don't uh, just merely no, have um, those households, those offices, nga at dili, nang, dili lang na sila ato ang ginakater no, for usage. Dili lang for usage ang ato ang objective for water distribution system, but also for reservation and storage, no, particularly for other uses no, or emergency conditions, particularly like, like ng mga fire uh, fire instances, no, or basically fire protection. So, isa na siya sa tong objective noon, how uh, do we effectively design uh, what a water distribution system, okay? So, basically, no, the flow of a uh, water distribution system is from water source, kung akay source dire, i-design mo na siya nga from the water source, no, padulong siya sa uh, treatment plants. 
Okay, so treatment. Then after mo undergo sa treatment, that's the time that na it will now be distributed to homes uh, or offices and the like. So basically, dito na din siya sa mga beneficiary. So ina na ang mahimong flow no sa atong water distribution system. Okay. And considering all of this, you know, kaniyang mga objectives. Number one, to be able to supply each customer with an adequate rate at an adequate pressure. So, kani siya nga um, objective will be met no, by putting pumps uh, from sources to those areas that are higher in elevation. Because we need to jump up the pressure of the water no, so it would reach that uh, certain area na located higher no, or higher in elevation uh, as compared to the source. Okay, And not only no, no, that we... Uh, aim to supply each customer with, with, with enough rate and with uh, adequate pressure, but also we need to consider the water quality criteria. Nga kinanglan, mainom sa siya. No? Uh, basically, mo na siya um, ano, kaning minimal no? nga um, standard for water quality. Mainom yun siya nga tubig. No? Safe to drink nga water. At the same time, to have sufficient capacity and reserve storage for um, emergency conditions such as kanang mga fire incidents. Okay. Now let's talk about water demand. So as what the, uh, a water supply system must satisfy the water demand of the population being served and the fire flows needed to protect life and property while providing due consideration to the proximity of the service area to the sources of water. The water demand at the end of the design life is usually the basis for design a uh, system design. And so, water demand forecasting is generally required. So, for us, though, to be able to um, effectively design a water distribution system, no, we need to supply no, or we need to fulfill no, the water demand of the population or the necessity or the amount of water that the population needs. Okay, so for us to be able no, to meet the water demand no, uh, by the population, we need to forecast the water demand. No? Because uh, we cannot only, uh, there are a lot of ways to forecast water demand. And same as like with those kind of um, weather Nato, no? So, magdepende, there are a lot of variables that we need to consider. That's why we, it is called a weather forecast, meaning, uh, anticipate lang nato, no? Kung what is likely to happen, no, for the weather. Same goes with water demand. We also need to forecast. We need also to foresee. And, uh, since we are engineers, so we are going to calculate how much water does the, uh, does the population need, no? So, uh, required good siya. Uh, kay Basin DI, we are designing a water distribution system that is way, way below no, the requirement of that population in terms of water. Or maybe, uh, if we don't forecast, no, or we, if we do not um, calculate no, accurately the demand of water for that certain population, we may go uneconomical. Meaning, uh, ang atong gidesign, no, ng water demand in, ter in terms of uh, necessity of the population, maybe sobra lang kaysa uh, than the demand itself. So, maybe we can go economical into that. So, maybe, uh, isa siya sa mga objective no, to um, effectively and accurately forecast the water demand of a certain population. So, there are a variety of methods that are used to forecast the water demand. And the appropriate method depends on the particular situation. So, most forecasting methods can be cat categorized as per capita models, extrapolation models, disaggregation models, multiple regression models, and land use models. So, daghan kayo siya pamaagi. No. Uh, on how do we uh, forecast the water demand for a certain population? No, on sa kadaghanon uh, sa tubig na no, ang ilang kinahanglan for that certain population. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, no, land, land use model. So, um, ato na siyang i-discuss, ato na siyang i-define ang kaning lima kapamaagi on how to properly and accurately no, uh, forecast and um, the water demand of a certain population. Okay. Now, let's talk about per capita models. So, these models simply estimate 
the average consumption per capita. Gin-estimate lang daw niya ang average consumption per capita or per person. So, when we say per capita, that means per person. And then, um, after having known the average consumption uh, per person, you then multiply this per capita consumption by a projected population at the end of the design life to estimate the average total demand. So, basically, um, in summary, the per capita models is basically iyahang i-compute ang pila ang kinahanglan sa isa ka tao, no? And then, iha din ang multiply kung pila ka tao are there, no, or present or encompassed in a certain population. I-times lang dahil na niya, no? So, muna siya ang per capita model. Now, let's go to extrapolation models. So, extrapolation models plot the annual or monthly water consumption as a function of time. Annual or monthly water consumption as a function of time or population and then extrapolate this relationship into the future. This approach can be applied separately to various water use components such as residential and non-residential use. Next type of model on how do we effectively and accurate, accurately uh, forecast nor estimate a certain population and its demand is the disaggregation uh, model. So, water use is disaggregated into basic segments such as single family, residential, multifamily, residential, institutional, commercial, industrial, and public facilities. So, the consumption per unit within each segment is estimated and multiplied by the projected number of units at the end of the design period. So, ang kaning disaggregation models is just the same with per capita. Kaso lang, disaggregate niya or ang um, consumption sa isa ka population iya hanggi uh, break down into basic segments such as kaning uh, single family residential, multifamily residential kay of course kaning um, segments in a population lahi man siya o um, consumption no? so kanang industrial they are most likely to have no or to have a higher demand of water as compared to those single family residential no? so muna siya yung disaggregate aron siguro proportionate ang iyahang pag uh, pag uh, pag forecast no sa water demand and at the same time kung mag forecast po siya ang population growth kaysa mang good sa pag accurately and effectively forecast a water demand is of course you will also be uh, forecasting the population growth so kani nga mga models will also help you no in uh, projecting or estimating no, the number of population in this in this year anyway we will have um example later no so um this aggregation model as compared to per capita model it could be considered as more economical because it doesn't mean mong good for example there are 100,000 people living in that um barangay or in that area it doesn't mean man nga they have the same um consumption per person uh, because we need to consider the segments or categories no, of a certain population, residential, commercial, industrial. So, kana siya, per segment again, no, they have this different um, water demand or iyahang average consum consumption. Okay? Next uh, model in uh, forecasting no, a population is the multiple regression model. So, these empirical models relate the water demand to a variety of independent variables such as population, number of households or dwelling units, household income, lot sizes, land use, employment, and various weather variables. So, uh, of course, no, yahang definition is multiple regression models, meaning in your analysis or in your calculation, they can consider as compared to the first three models that we have mentioned earlier earlier, ang multiple regression models talks about um, daghan ng mga variables such as not only the population but also it talks about or uh, it involves no the uh, number of households or dwelling units pila kabalay sa isa ka population at the same time pilang income lot sizes land use employment no apil pa na siya nga uh, variable nga independent variable na nga consider in uh, the forecasting no of um, the water demand of a population so lastly uh, another model no to uh, if uh, forecast no the the water demand or the population is the land use model. 
So these models uh, base their water use forecast on the projected uses of residential, commercial, industrial, and public lands within the service area. So water use projections are developed for each land use model. So um, as compared to the other models that we have mentioned, canning land use does not dwell much on how many people are living in that area, no, how many households are in that locality, no, or pilang ilang income, and employment, and the weather, weather variables as compared to multiple regression. Ang land use, it only focuses or ginagamit niya as a basis for the water use forecast ang land use, residential land ba siya, commercial land, industrial, or public na mga land. So basically, kung unsay gamit sa lands that are present in that certain locality, diha siya magbase, no? Sa iyahang forecast or pag ano niya, pag calculate niya, no, sa uh, future water demand. So the development of water demand forecast models involves highly specialized activities and usually require close coordination with the local planning department. The per capita model can be used to illustrate the methodology for developing and applying a water demand forecast model. Okay, so among all five models that we have just discussed, uh, what we will be focusing more on is the per capita forecast model. So estimation of the water demand using a per capita model requires prediction of population. So of course, you cannot predict you know, the water demand without having an idea of how many people are there in that population. So basically, Mangod, the prediction of population or the water demand prediction you know, is um, directly proportional to the prediction of the population. So, uh, well, while it is not guaranteed that uh, as the population increases, uh, the a water demand also increases, but uh, again, there is a direct relationship between um, such variables. No, so and um, again, this uh, per capita model forecast or forecast model model it requires development and per capita water usage in the service area at the end of the design period. So the average water demand from various sectors of the population is usually taken as equal to the predicted population in that sector. So again, the average water demand ko, no, from us, uh, from various sectors of the population is usually taken as equal to the predicted population. So the average water demand is equal to the predicted uh, equal to the predicted population in that sector multiplied by per capita demand in that sector. So if you are going to express that one into a formula or an equation, Monisha, no? now we label that one as equation number. 3.1 so that is q is equal to the summation uh, from 1 to n multiplied by qi times pi so where q here q here is the average water demand rate no and this uh, small letter q here no is the average per capita demand rate so pila ang uh, demand sa isa ka person and then your p here is the population or pila ka person and then the subscript i uh indicates the demand sector and n is the indicates the uh number of sectors so n and the i here so in some cases a single lumped uh, per capita demand is used to incorporate the demand from all sectors of the service area in which case the average water demand rate Q is estimated using the relation Q is equal to small letter Q bar times P where Q bar is the lump per capita demand rate and P is the total population of the service area. So method, uh, methods for estimating the per capita model demand rate and the population are given in the following sections. Okay, so before we go into the example no, of uh, per capita model, let's define estimation of population. So in planning water supply projects, future, uh, future populations within the service area must be estimated. So you cannot effectively design a water supply project or a water distribution system without having to predict or estimate the future population in that area. So prediction of population growth and development requires a variety of considerations including urban planning constra uh, constraints, location of urban growth boundaries, uh, changes in transportation networks, and new land use policies. The simplest models of population forecasting treat the population as a whole, fit empirical growth functions to historical population data, 
and forecast future populations based on past trends. Meaning, um, ang pag ano daw, ang simplest model daw on how to forecast a population is basically going back into the growth no for the past years. That's why uh, i-base ni mo na siya sa past trends o oh, kung um from year 1990 from year uh, to year 2005 pila naman ang nag nag-grow no how much pop did the population grow and then 2005 to uh, 2015 then 2025 no 2035 so kana siya so uh, basically ang pag-forecast sa population would require or would involve looking back into the past trends no kung how did the population uh become no uh what it is today okay so high levels of disaggregation have the advantage to making forecast assumptions very explicit so uh gimansya na diron ang pagdisaggregate ko no sa imuhang uh estimation uh, imong consideration would give ni or would make your forecast assumptions very explicit or shall we say very uh conservative very um accurate no but however these models tend to be complex and require more data than empirical models that treat the population as a whole so over relatively short time horizons in order for on, on the order of 10 years or less detailed disaggregation models may not be any more accurate than using empirical extrapolation models of the population as a whole okay so um Mata siya na, mata siya on how to estimate um, a population. Gihatagan niya diri og um, advantage or um, disaggregation model. However, gi-emphasize po niya diari ang iyang disadvantage. no And at the same time, so on, in the light of the advantage of the disaggregation model, it gave light to the advantage of um kanang model that takes the population as a whole. Okay? So now let's talk about uh per capita diba we were talking about per capita forecast model. So under that no daghantag uh, natay actually tulo ka klase no uh, sa pag calculate sa population that is the arithmetical increase method, the geometrical increase method and then the incremental increase method. So uh you will find out later that these methods na ang yang output and your yang prediction really vary from each other. Doesn't mean nga uh, mga methods same methods na sila no lahi lahi is like output put per per year or ilang prediction per year no so ato na siyang discuss each and then also not only that uh, we will be defining these methods we will also be knowing or discovering no when to uh when do when do we use which okay so because uh present man sila existing man sila nga mga methods wherein uh, you can easily use them no but uh the question there is what will be your basis in using them okay so uh, let's define first the arithmetical increase method. So this is one out of three. Atong i discuss uh, for this day now is an example of the per capita model or how do we uh forecast now the growth of the population in the coming years. Again, no nganong need na to i compute ang um, population or nganong need na to i forecast ang population in the next couple of years because we can also determine the water demand. No, for that certain population. Kaya dili man na pwede nga mag-design uh, ng tag-water design, uh, water distribution system nga mulas lang siya or atong basihan nga population or kadaghanun sa tao or uh, demand of water based on the existing population. Dili man, or the next two years, next five years, dili man, no? it would really require no um long forecasting of years and population for you no, for your design for water distribution to become effective okay because if you will just be uh, designing a water distribution system that is considering or that had only considered uh two years three years so what will happen no after three years so meaning uh, mag design na another water uh, distribution system so we don't want that now that is very uneconomical okay so um First method in determining or projecting the population in the next couple of years is the one we call arithmetical increase method. So this method is suitable for large, let's highlight that one, uh, for large and old city with considerable development. If it is used for small, average, or comparatively new cities, it will, uh, it will give low result than actual value. In this method, the average increase in population per decade is calculated 
from the past census report. So basically na atong dimension giniha nga ang pag forecast or ang pag predict or ang pag estimate uh, of population in the future will require the designer or the one that is that is calculating or the one that is trying to estimate or forecast the uh, population uh, is required no to look back and also include in the calculation the past trends no and how did the population grow for the past couple of years and for this case um how did uh the population uh grow no per decade in the past couple of decades okay so this increase is added to the present population to find out the population of the next decade so thus it is assumed that the population is increasing at constant rate so uh, yeah, hang, uh, therefore, the population after the nth decade will be this one, no? P sub n. P sub n is equal to P plus n times C. So, muna siya ato ang formula for our arithmetic in uh, arithmetical increase method. Okay? So, muna siya ito ang uh, governing equation where P n is the population after the nth decade and P is the present population. So, let's have an example number one here on the arithmetical increase method so we have here the problem it says that you are asked to predict no the uh for that you are asked to predict the population for the next years of 2021 2031 and 2041 from the uh, following population data so in okay census there you know so years 1961 1971 uh, 1981, 1991, 2001, and 2011. And at the same time, uh, each year has a corresponding population. So, for example, for year 1961, the um, population is just eight, uh, 858,545 persons. Lang. 858, persons lang yang population. And then on uh, 10 years after that, in 1971, it became 1,015,672 no? uh, people. And 10 years after that, nahimo siyang 1,201,553. No, sorry, no, medyo uh, mali ang yahang pag-insert sa kama. Anyway, so 10 years after 1981, that is 1991, the population now is 1 million. So, let me just rewrite that. 1,691,553. And 538 persons. No? Or the population has totaled to 1,691,538. And then, 10 years after that, nahimo siyang 2,077,820. And 2011, Nahimo siyang 2,585,000, 2,585,000, and 862, no? Ang uh, total population uh, on the year 2011. Now, tulog ka po forecast on for the year 2021 and the year 2023, ah, uh, sorry, 2031 and 2041, okay? So, here is the solution, very short lang siya. So, let us just rewrite, no? Ingun siya is arithmetical increase method man daw. So, let us rewrite the governing equation here. Pn is equal to P plus Nc. Okay? So, ato siyang gitabi late din, eh. 1961 corresponding population, 1971 corresponding population. So, basically, ato lang gitabi uh, the year, the population, and then the increment or the increase. Okay? So, the first thing that we will be doing is we will be calculating the increase in population per decade. Okay? So, ang um, mahitabuan is na kay third column. So, ang kwanan ni is uh, you um, subtract no, the, the preceding year, kani siya, by the uh, atong population 10, year, right, 10 years um, before. No? So, for example, one uh one million fifteen thousand six hundred seventy two minus kani so kan na siyang e minus na siya deduct kibali no so again one oh one five six seven two minus eight five eight five four five mahi mo na siyang one five seven one two seven okay next then is kani na sad imuhang I minus kani sila. No? 120 
minus um ato i-calculate na so that is 120-1553 minus 101-5672 so that is 185 185-881 kanina po dahin sila kana na which is kanina po dahin na siya okay so that is 169-1538 169-1538 3, 8, minus 120-1553. So, there we have 489985. Then, kanyang na po dahin sila. No? And then, you will have this. Okay? So, that is 2077-820-169-1538. Seven, seven, so, that is 386-282. Uh, then, kanyang na po dahin sila. No? That is 25, 25, 85, 285, 862, minus 20, 77, 820. So, there we have 50, 80, 42. So, i-average din yung muna siya. I-add din yung mo silang tulo. Ah, sorry. Pila mo sa mabawak. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, i-add din yung muna siya. Add. Then, divide. So, i-add nyo mo na 157-127 plus 185-881 plus 489-985 plus 386-282 plus 50-80-40. Then, divide 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. Kalima man siya. So, the average increment will now be 3, 4, 5, 4, 6, 3. Or 1, 2, 3. So, 345 um, 1,463 ang iyahang average increase per decade. So, per 10 years, gadako ang population by 345,463. Okay, so going back into the equation, 2021, 2031, and 2041, itong kinahang lang isolve, no? So, let's solve for 2021. So, the, the equation says here, Pn is equal to P plus N times C. Okay, so your PN now will be uh, P2021, no? And then a population, recent population, kaning P is the recent population that is 2585862. So we just write 2585862. So manang population in the year 2011. So ang N dayo na to dire. Okay, is the number of decades. So, pila man ang number of decades. So, 2021 is 2021 minus 2011 divided by 10. Okay, so that is 2021 minus 2011 divide 10. So, that is one decade. Then, it times the name sa kaninia. Okay, sa iyahang average increase, that is 345,463. Sorry, 463. So, there we have the population by 2021 will now be equal to 2,931,325. Uh, 2, okay, same right now, asya dere. Okay, so if you are also going to compute for the uh, population in year 2031, so same argument pantag basis, no, ang atong population, recent population of uh, 2,500,000. Okay, so that is 2,500,000. So that is 2,500,000. So that is 2 decades, right? 20 years man siya, so 20 decades, and then we multiply it sa iyahang average increment of 345,463, and then if you're going to calculate that one, 31 is now uh, 3,200,000. Uh, Six, uh, 76 and 788. Same lagi ang process when we compute for the population by 2041. Okay? 
So, muna siyang arithmetical increase method. Now, let's proceed to the geometrical increase method. Second method, no, out of three uh, methods for the uh, per capita model. No? We have here the geometrical increase method. Okay, so in this method, the percentage increase, increase in population from decade to decade is assumed to remain constant. So the geometric mean increase is used to find out the future increment in the population. Since this method gives higher values and hence should be applied for a new industrial town at the beginning of development for only a few decades. So the population at the nth decade, P sub n, can be estimated. P sub n is equal to the recent population or the present population times 1 plus this is the geometric mean in terms of percentage divided by 100 raised to um, n which is the number of decades. So, money siya ang governing equation for the geometrical increase method. And then you will be memorizing this one. So, if you are going to recoil for the arithmetic mean, uh, arithmetical increase method mo niyahang equation pag abot diri sa geometrical increase method is kane okay so uh, to bet uh, to uh, let you better understand that let's have example number 2 so same reg hapon siya no ang number of population na from 1961 sorry from 1961 to 211 uh, sorry uh, 2011 so same reg hapon siya same set of population gihapon same and then the increment ato lang po siyang gidala dire no that is again ang kaning 157 127 gikan sya dire no uh, 101 minus uh, 101 minus 858 uh, sorry 858 545 no so muna sya iyang increment dire so again i minus po na to ni 121 is kanina siya then, I minus pod ni Mone, Mone siya. No, I minus pod ni Mone, silang duha. Mahimo siyang kaina. Okay, so 258562 uh, minus 2077820, that is 508042. Okay, so now having, uh, de uh, having determining, no? Uh, having determined the, sorry, having determined the increment, may I minus lang ni mong population per decade. Now, na kay formula do to solve with which is the geometrical increase rate of growth so what you will be doing is the increment kani siya divided by kani no yeah and leave it be so for example ang kaning 157 i divide ni mo ni siya sa katong previous niya nga population kung asa siya gikan no so 157127 divided by 845 uh, 858 rather, 85845, then leave it be so that is 0 0.18. And then let's have pa da yun, di ka ni siya, 185881, kana, then e, divide di mo na siya sa kanina yung preceding population. Okay, so and then you just have to let it be. And then uh, next is kanisha siya, the increment of, on the year 1991. Uh, that is 489985 kanina siya divided by the preceding no um sorry the previous population now which is the population on 1981 then you just have to let it be next is the population on 2001 uh the increase in the population from 1991 to 2001 that is uh 30 uh 386 282 no kanina siya oh, sorry like color para basa ko ninyo Let's have yellow. So, ang kaning uh, increase na from year 1991 to 2001, that is equivalent to, uh, okay. Kana siya. You divide it once sa yung previous population, base population 1991. And then on, uh, no, on year 2011, ang yahang increase is uh, from 2001 to 2011, that is uh, 508,042. No, then I minus, then I minus, I divide, sorry, I divide, I minus, by the uh, base population in year 2001. 
So, makita mo ani, the geometric mean, no, you just have to multiply each uh, geometrical increase rate, no, of growth is 0.18, can you 0.18, times 0.18, times 0.40, times 0.23, times 0.24, then you enclose that one, actually 1 over 5 na siya, no? 1 over 5, so 1 over n man, as lima man siya kabuok, so 1 over n. Okay, so, may siya 0.18, diha na siya. Kani 0.18, diha po na siya. 0.40, diha po na siya. 0.23, diha yung 0.24. Then, you multiply that one. You multiply all, kala sila tanan, no? Yung product, uh, you raise that one line to 1 over n. And for this case, is 1 over 5. So, let us rewrite the formula. It says, for the geometrical increase is, Pn is equal to 1 plus the geometric increase divided by 100 raised to n. Okay? So, by the way, ang geometric mean ay sub G is katuna 0.18 times 0.18 times 0.40 times 0.23 times 0.24 times 1 over 5 and then you will arrive a geometric mean of 0 0.235 that is 23.5% but we will be using the decimal. Okay. Okay, divide 100 man siya dire. Kasi siyang equation, siyang formula. No? So, um, that is for 2021. Let's solve for 2021. I'm sorry, napaday ano-ani. Uh, P. I forgot. I write P there. So, P ito ang base, um, uh, base population is katong pinaka-recent. That is the population in year 2011. That is 2 million 585 585862 times 1 plus katong di geometric mean that is 0 0.235 times n pila ka decades no that is 1 so we have the population in year 21 via geometrical increase method is 3,193,582 40. So, muna siya ang iyahang projected population via geometrical increase method by year 2021. Now, let's solve. Same na siya. Here. Na, and then, for uh, year 2020, uh, 2031, so, itong base uh, population is the recent one in year 2011. So, that is again 2,585,000. Eight six two times one plus zero point two three five rates to how many decades? Twenty thirty one minus twenty eleven. That is um uh twenty years or two decades, and then you will have twenty thirty one a population of three million nine hundred forty four zero twenty. And same, magyapon ang process when solving the uh, population in year 2041. Okay? Now, let's proceed to the last method na in the uh, per, per capita model. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, there are five. But uh, for this subject, we will only be discussing the first three, na, which is the arithmetical method, the geometrical method, and this method, na, the last method. This is the arithmetical increase method. So, this method is modification of arithmetical increase method. So, similar siya. And it is suitable for an average sized town under normal condition where the growth rate is found to be increasing order. So, pwede siya, I mean, mura siya arithmetical increase method. But as compared to the arithmetical increase method, pwede siya sa average sized town. No, kay increase method is for large man siya population. No, so, pag gamay ang population that you are trying to project or estimate, so then you can use the incremental increase um, increase method rather. No? So, while adopting this method, the increase in increment is considered for calculating future population. The incremental increase is determined for each decade from the past population and the average value is added to the present population along with uh, the average rate of increase. So, mani siya ang yahang governing equation, the third equation that uh, you will be uh, memorizing uh, uh, to estimate uh, the population, this one. Okay, so P sub N is equal to P plus N times X 
plus uh, n times n plus 1 all over 2 and then times y. So, if you are going to rewrite that one, that is pn is equal to p plus n times x plus n n plus 1 over 2 times y. Okay? So, mana siya. So, uh, I believe this is just the same uh, koan problem. Example number 3. But, ato siyang gamitin via incremental increase method. Okay? So, same rin yapon asyang year from 1961 to 2011. And then, same rin yapon ang population. And then, gi carry over po na ito no ang uh, increase niya, uh, which is the x. Namun asyang kanidere, kanin siyang equation. Ano siya nga variable rather. No, you carry over. Ngayon po natin ang mga differences. This is 101.5672 minus kani. Muna siya. And ganing 120.1553 minus 101.5672. Muna siya. Okay. Ang maad lang niya is the incremental increase y. So, basically, this is the increase, no? Uh, the incremental increase of the increase in population. Okay. So, this is 1585. Now, let's uh, calculate that one. That is... 1585 8, 8, 8, minus 1, 5, 7, 1, 2, 7. Abalid ay 1, Minus kani. Huh? 1585 881 minus 15. Kani siya. No, that is 185 881 minus 157127. Okay. Same yapan ani sa iya ha. Uh, 489985 minus 185881. Ana. That is positive 30, 41, 0, 4. And then, on the next one, 3, 8, 6, 2, uh, 2, 8, 2, minus 4, 8, 9, and 8, 5. That is negative. Now, 103, 7, 0, 3. And then, we will be retaining the sign convention for that. And on the next row, on 2011, that is 50, 80, 40, minus 3, 8, 6, 2, 8, 2. That is positive 1, 2, 1, 7, 60. And then, atan siyang itotal. Corresponding total ang atong excess and uh, y's. And at the same time, atong i-calculate ilang average. So, average na siya. Okay? After calculating such, so let's go back to our equation. Let's rewrite here. Pn is equal to P plus N times X. Plus N, pagin ni mo siyang incremental increase. That is N, N plus 1 over 2. That is the y. Okay? So, let's uh, solve first for the 2021. So, P2021. At ang base nga population is kini for the year 2011. Same lagi ha pandara, ano? That is 2,585. 2,585,862. Plus N. Kani? N. That is, the number N is the number of decades. So, 2021 minus 2011, that is 10 years. So, that is 1 decade. So, that is 1 plus ato ding X. Ing atong increase. Arithmetic increase. No, kani siya. So, that is the average basically. So, that is 345. 345,000. 463 and then on the third term plus pagid na siya of n that is 1 because 1 decade raman siya 1 plus a times 1 plus 1 over 2 and then you multiply that 1 by the y okay, the, the average of the incremental increase that is 87729 87,729 and then there you will arrive at the population for year 2021 3,019,054 
Okay, 3 million, 19,005,4. Same mga Japan, ang inyong buhaton for year 2031 and 2041. So, as you can see, and I, I guess you have noticed, no nga, in a uh, different method, lahi-lahi siya og uh, estimation for the next uh certain years and for the, for this example 2021 2031 and 2041 and for the next three decades from 2011 and uh using different methods like lahi put ang population increase no so that's why we have uh defined well earlier no when do we use each method okay so again for the arithmetic increase method uh you need to have um, a huge no, and a wide uh, population so you can use it effectively. Otherwise, it will not be accurate. Same, uh, same mga pa, no? Uh, so, pwede ra din siya for incremental increase method. Gunita ni mo siya pag gamay ra ang iyahang population. Okay? Sige, so that ends our discussion. I will see you on our next meeting. Thank you so much.